What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. This is Joe from Petty Fixes. So I had to take a little break. I know y'all ain't seen me in a while, but just got a little tired of YouTube for a minute and I had to take a break, but I'm back and I'm ready to give you all some more content. So today we are going to be talking about something that's in my thumbnail. And you all know, you know how I am. I like a clean black and white build or all white and black build. And um, I like the big cases. I like to water cool all my stuff, but this is a little different today. I went a smaller route. And when I say small, I mean small, small. So um, we're gonna be checking out a case that was inspired by the Motif Monument. Um, if you guys are not familiar with that, um, these are the pictures. This is what this case looks like. And this is the kind of build you can expect from something like this. Very minimal, very sleek. And um, it caught my attention when I started seeing these builds pop up, especially the one that Random Frank P did. I started seeing his build and I just searched. I just looked around and I came across a case from Etsy, actually, you know, ETSY, the little website where people sell stuff. And um, like I said, it was inspired by the Motif Monument, but it's a little different. It offers some advantages that that one does not have. So with that said, guys, let's go ahead and jump into this. You also get to see what my new editing build consists of, the new processor, the new RAM, the new graphics card. And um, we're going to go and get started. Let's go. The Perio Mini ITX open frame case is a hybrid case, so it's a mashup of the Motif Monument and the Hydra Hybrid. It pulls the best features from both cases and expands on both of them in very meaningful ways. For starters, you aren't just limited to an SFX power supply. You can actually use a full ATX power supply in this. Dimensions for this case is 7.5 inches wide by 6.5 inches deep by 13 inches tall. Very compact for what it is, which is what I was aiming for. This case comes with pre-installed standouts for the motherboard and only supports mini ITX boards, so plan your build accordingly. So moving to the left side of the case, there's a slot for the motherboard I.O. shield, below that the spot for the graphics card, and below that the space for the power supply. So moving around back, things do get interesting. So here is where you're going to see the cool backplate that was expanded on from the other two previously mentioned cases. Here there's a hexagonal design made for airflow for attaching extra coolant. So why would this case need extra coolant? Well, if you want to water cool your components, this is what you want. This case supports radiators up to a 280mm rad installed sideways. Now, installed sideways might look kind of odd, but I think with the right components and vision, it'll look pretty sweet. This backplate is also removable to reveal two slots for two 2.5 inch drives. This area also allows for space for cable management. In my experience, building this case is very simple. Cable management was very easy, even with the drives installed. All in all, that's really all there is to this case. It's a very simplistic case with a very minimal aesthetic, which is what I was going for. So now let's jump into the build. Okay, so let's talk about the hardware that's gonna go in this build. So switching up to a mini ITX build was not something I planned on doing, but like I said in the beginning, man, I just adored this case and the design and everything about it. So um, with the motherboard, I'm gonna go with the X570i from ASUS um, paired with a Ryzen 9 3900X. You might be wondering why this 3900X looks so weird. Um, it's because it's lapped. So typically when people lap a CPU or a GPU die, basically what they do is they scrape off, well they sand down and buff down the uh, IHS on it to make it really, really smooth because typically an IHS isn't necessarily the smoothest. So it can cause for some irregularities in the paste when you put the pressure on the CPU um, cooler. So they lap it to where it's equal pressure across the whole IHS and it typically results in a little bit cooler performance. So that's why that looks that way, but that's the board we're gonna go with today. Next, the GPU we're gonna go with is an RTX 3070. I mean, 27, I wish I had a 3070, but RTX 2070 from EVGA. This is the RTX 2070 Black. Um, no RGB on this thing. Um, I didn't care about RB RGB for the GPU, but this is the GPU we're gonna be using because this is gonna be mainly an editing slash gaming rig, but more so editing than gaming. And the program I use, DaVinci Resolve, uses CUDA cores more than AMD, you know, whatever AMD uses. So I needed a um, NVIDIA card for that. So this is the card we're gonna go with today. So for the um, storage, we're going to go with a 500 gigabyte WD Black SN750 NVMe SSD. Now, this is something that I've been used to. I'm really, really happy with the performance of the one I already have. 
So I decided to stick with this. So it's gonna make for a whole terabyte of NVMe storage. Okay, so for the RAM, we're gonna go with the gorgeous Dominator Platinum RGB kit. This is a 16 gigabyte kit, an eight by two gigabyte, clocked at 3600 megahertz. Um, with this, there may be an issue with clearance for the CPU cooler that I'm going with. Um, so I'll explain that here in a second. And last but not least, when it comes to the cooler, we're gonna go with the Be Quiet Dark Rock TF. This is a top flow cooler. Um, I saw a build with this in it before, and what made me settle with this was just the aesthetic was just awesome looking. Um, it's a very, very peculiar cooler when it comes down to it because it is a top flow cooler, as I said. And what you can see is that it has a separate fin stack beneath the top fin stack. You can actually stock two of these Be Quiet 135 millimeter fans. They're not quite 140, but they have 120 millimeter mounts on them. You can stack two of those in a push-pull configuration. Now, when it comes to my RAM, what I meant was this may cause a clearance issue because the bottom fan actually hits the top of the heat spreaders on the Dominator Platinums. So I actually took it off. So I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna test configuration and temps with the fan on and with the fan off. I have another set of um, low profile um, Corsair RAM over here somewhere. The Vengeance DDR4. This is actually a 32 gigabyte kit. I have two sticks. So um, I just wanted those because I mean, who don't? So um, with that said, yeah, let's just go ahead and get the building. So when it comes to building in this case, it's extremely straightforward and extremely easy. This case supports um, ATX power supplies as well as SFX power supplies. Um, I have an SFX and I did run into an issue with that as far as mounting it. So it's actually not mounting, it actually just sitted, it's actually just sitting back inside of the little cavernous area where the power supply goes at. So I'm gonna find a bracket there's tons of brackets online. You can find any brackets that adapt from ATX to SFX. And I'm gonna find one to put that on there and just have it mounted cleanly. Um, when it comes to routing cables, cables are very, very easily routed behind the back plate. Super easy to do. It's not an issue at all. I would recommend getting um, custom sleeve cables that mount, that go directly from the power supply to the motherboard. I have extensions. And even with extensions, it's not an issue at all. 
So um, what you all see was the extensions. I do have the two um, SSDs mounted back behind the plate. And even with those mounted behind that plate, it's easy, super easy cable routing. Um, I had no issues whatsoever. So with that, um, it's very easy to build in. Like I said, super straightforward. Only four screws are screwing the motherboard. And um, that's it. That's really it when it comes to that. So this, this is it. This is the build. Um, when it comes down to it, like I said, it was very easy to build in and very straightforward. It's surprisingly small. And when I saw pictures of it, I actually thought it was bigger um, than what I actually got. So when I got it in the mail, it was super small. It was already put together. Everything was done on it and it was just ready to be built in. So I've been having it for about two weeks now and I've loved it. I love everything about it. It's so small, it's minimal. I can actually sit it on my desk and I don't have to worry about um, finding a separate place to put a big tower at. And that's kind of what I wanted to get away from because even though I like the, the whole extravagant builds and the water cooling and stuff like that, this is actually just fine. It's no less powerful or anything like that. And what I'm about right now is more power than, you know, than looks. But besides, I mean, this thing does look pretty freaking badass, so you can't lie about that. But when it comes down to it, man, um, this thing has all the power that I need. And I actually made the switch from um, AMD to NVIDIA when it comes to graphics cards, as I specified earlier, because I wanted CUDA cores for my editing program. And DaVinci Resolve uses CUDA cores instead of using whatever you know AMD uses. And it works better. And it's a big noticeable difference when it comes down to it. So. Um, I actually got it all for a steal too when it comes down to it. So all my projects, all my projects, all my products, all my parts and components inside of this build are secondhand because as you know, the PC market is ridiculous right now when it comes to finding parts. So um, with that said guys, I hope you like what I did with this video. I uh, hope you like the build. If you guys want to check out this particular case, I will link it down in the description below and go to the guy's page, check him out, support him. You know, I'm all about supporting small businesses, so I told him I'd do a video just to get this out there for him. And um, yeah, that's it. That's it, guys. This is Joe from Petty Fixes. We're gonna wrap this one up. I'll see y'all in the next one.